Antonio Royo Martinez is normally pretty even-tempered, but mentioned solar energy and his hackles rise. Around 10 years ago, he plowed a million euros into a solar park, his entire savings, along with a 600,000 euro loan. Like many others, he thought it was a safe option, a sector with guaranteed government backing. My financial advisor at the savings bank said to me, Royal, if you're looking to invest, put your money into renewable energies. The sector looks like it's doing well. At the time, the Spanish government was eager to boost the solar energy sector. It called on the general public to get on board and guaranteed a fixed price for solar power fed into the grid. 60,000 people heeded the call. In the first year, Royo earned 120,000 euros. But as the recession took hold, the government cut its solar power subsidies. I have 85,000 euros costs a year and I'm only making 70,000. His faith has been shattered in renewable energies and in the government subsidies. He feels the state has let him down. Lawyer Juan Castro Gil represented Royo and other solar energy producers who brought lawsuits over the payment cuts. The cases were lost in the Supreme Court. No, han sido muy... Spanish courts weren't interested in our claims, not out because they felt they had to protect the state. Royo and the other investors agree, and they're not mincing their words. I don't trust the Spanish judiciary or the government. It was illegal to make the cuts after the fact. I think it's a disgrace. What makes things worse is that other investors have been treated differently. 150 kilometers south of Madrid, there is a huge solar energy power plant. It's owned by a British investment fund, which also objected to the cuts in renewable subsidies. Investors there didn't take their case to the Spanish court, but to a private arbitration tribunal, an option that's only open to foreign investors. The British investment fund was awarded more than 120 million euros in compensation. Spain is facing dozens of other similar claims. That's unprecedented in the EU. German companies like RWE or E.ON are among them. They declined to comment on the case. The Spanish government also turned down our request for an interview. In a press release, the energy ministry expressed its optimism that Spain wouldn't lose any further claims. And the small investors? They're frustrated. Of course I'm annoyed. The foreigners have won their claims, but we didn't. At the same time, it gives me hope. If they win, then we might have a second chance. Royo and the other solar energy operators are hoping that their lawyer will, in the end, ensure that they get the subsidies promised to them. But he's not expecting Spanish courts to come up with the goods. He thinks the EU will have to intervene. In each of the cases, we've applied for the verdicts to be presented before the European Court of Justice for clarification. But we can't appeal directly. A Spanish court has to do that. And they've refused up to now. Royo will be getting some money from the Spanish state this year. But it still has a habit of bad payment practices. That's left Royo disillusioned. I won't invest again. Once I've paid for the solar plant, I'll live off it. But I'm never going to put so much money into something again. No. Antonio Royo Martinez isn't the only one who feels like this. Thousands of other Spaniards no longer believe their government's promises. In the end, it's the planet that could pay the price.